y'all. It's week 10 on WeGovi. January is also National Slow Cooker Month. I know that Crock-Pot meals are a big hit with busy moms and busy working families, so I thought we would do a week of Crock-Pot meals. This week we're gonna be eating Crock-Pot French Toast Casserole. We're gonna be doing turkey meatball stroganoff, and finally, honey garlic chicken. All of the recipes are gonna be drink linked below in the description. If you're interested in a detailed calorie and macro breakdown on everything that I ate this week, I'll have a link to my Fitness Pal profile where you can view my food diary. If any of these recipes sound good to you, go ahead and give me a like for the YouTube algorithm. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get cooking. All right, y'all, we about to get started on this crock pot French toast casserole. So we need some brown sugar, butter, some eggs, cinnamon, nutmeg, walnuts. The recipe calls for pecans, but I have these in my pantry that I needed to use up. I got some vanilla. This is imitation vanilla extract. I normally use real, but I have this in my pantry from a large scale cooking thing that I did. And honestly, if you're baking or cooking the vanilla in something, I've read articles, it basically tastes the same, and vanilla is so expensive right now. So that's what we're using. Real maple syrup. I do not ever use pancake syrup because it's gross. Anyway, uh, some delightful Sara Lee bread, which is what's going to make this more calorie friendly. Some cashew milk, which will also help with the calorie count, and some sea salt. So let's get started. So I don't have an actual slow cooker, crock pot, whatever you want to call it. Um, I had one, but once I got my pressure cooker, I got rid of it because it's a multi-cooker, so it does all of the things. So I don't need to keep a crock pot and my pressure cooker because I have a very small kitchen. Ideally, I would like to have both someday when I have a kitchen large enough to have both, but right now I don't, so I don't. Recipe says to grease this, to spray it first. Okay, so we grease our slow cooker and then we're going to cube 12 ounces of this Sara Lee Delightful Bread. Alright, so we're going to start layering and it says to layer the bread. In our case, walnuts. I'm gonna give these a rough chop. Now, we're gonna mix up our custard, which is the eggs. Okay, four eggs. cashew milk, cinnamon, nutmeg, and salt. Dang it, I was gonna put those eggs first. And then this is the maple syrup and vanilla. Recommend beating your eggs before you put in all the other liquid. It makes it a lot easier to get those more homogenous. So we're gonna pour this in here. Give it a toss apparently, which I don't know why we bothered layering if we're gonna toss the bread. Honestly, I would have just used a bigger bowl to mix up the custard and throw on the bread in to make sure it all got soaked up. This is awfully dry. Well, I try to trust a recipe the first time I make it. We'll see how it goes. So again, I'm having this recipe. This is two tablespoons of butter, quarter cup of brown sugar, and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm gonna use a fork to crumble those together. Okay. 
Okay. So we're gonna just crumble this over the top. And then we're gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna leave it on steam because otherwise it's gonna pressure cook and that would not be good. And we're gonna cook it on high for two to two and a half hours or low for three to four hours. I'm probably gonna do it on low. And when this is done, I'll bring it back and show you. <clears throat> that looks pretty darn good, guys. Mm. Alright, I'm just gonna take that out and put it in a container to make it easy to dish out in the mornings. Good morning. Sorry. <laughs> it was a rough week. <laughs> no, I'm not, I mean, not like side effects wise or anything. I'm just, I'm really tired. This weekend was the gender reveal and I'm still recovering. I didn't get to do my food prep on Sunday, so everything is kind of back a day. So I made the breakfast casserole Monday, it's now Tuesday. You get it. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna try out this French toast casserole. I know it kind of just looks like a lump of food right now. Anyway, we're gonna just try this out. See how it is. They said to serve it with maple syrup, but it already had maple syrup in it, so I didn't put any in mine. Just wanna see kind of how it is plain. And it's got that butter, brown sugar stuff on top, so we'll see. pretty good um it's got really good flavor and I thought it was going to be dry but it's not um I don't know that I like it that much more than my regular french toast that I make though like I think this is a really great option if you're going to be like hosting a brunch or something like that because making like individual french toast for a group of people is kind of a pain in the butt but this is a way to kind of get those flavors without having to dip and cook each individual piece of french toast like you can just throw it all in a crock pot you can even prep the ingredients the night before, throw it all in, <clears throat> excuse me, and then in two hours you've got enough French toast to feed 12 people. So I think this is definitely worth trying. This is probably not something I'll prep on a regular basis because for just me, it's just as easy to make my French toast. And there's a, like, even though I have this recipe for three, like six servings, there's a lot more calories in this than there is in my French toast. So yeah. It's good. I suggest it. I just probably won't make it again. All right, let's work on these crockpot meatball stroganoff. So I had to make some substitutions here, but I'll walk you through it. So we're doing 93% lean ground turkey, some tomato paste, recipe called for fresh thyme. I don't have any, we're using them dried. Paprika, some cremini mushrooms, which are baby portobello mushrooms, a little bit of flour, some water, kosher salt, sour cream, oil, that is cashew milk in place of skim milk, also have some pepper, an onion, an egg, and this is one third cup of fresh breadcrumbs because the recipe called for whole wheat breadcrumbs, but I had like some heels of that delightful bread, so I just ground them up and made my own. Um, we have some beef bouillon, and then back here, I accidentally left my Worcestershire sauce at Nikki's house for Thanksgiving because I use it in my gravy. So we're doing a Worcestershire sauce substitute, which is soy sauce, white wine vinegar, and ketchup. So let's put this together. For being real, that's probably enough for what the recipe calls for. But for me, when it comes to onions, there's never enough. Never, never. these super fine because my husband is an onion detector. He likes the flavor but he doesn't like the texture so I chop them little because I'm a people pleaser. Okay let's go get these cooked. So this recipe is quite a bit more hands-on than I usually prefer my crock pot recipes to be. It just looks so good and we really like stroganoff in our house. I've never done a meatball one so I was like yeah. New. Here's the thing. Recipe doesn't tell me to do it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. This is my kitchen, I do it a lot. I'm a big fan of seasoning as I go, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. 
um, a little bit of pepper. All right, so while I'm waiting for that to do its thing, I'm gonna combine my meatball ingredients. There's our pound of meat, our egg, the breadcrumbs, three tablespoons of milk, three quarter teaspoon of salt, and that's kosher salt. Use table salt, I don't know what you're less. And then some black pepper. And then we will put half of the onions in there. I'm going to weigh up my sour cream over here. I am shy. I ran out of sour cream, but I still have some of this chive whipped cream cheese, so I just added the same volume of that to make up the difference. So we'll see what that does to the flavor. Who knows? So the recipe just says to throw them in with the meatballs in the sauce, but I know that my husband will be far happier if they are blended. So I'm gonna throw them in with the blended sauce. Because the recipe calls to blend the sauce. I'm assuming to emulsify the, um, what's it called? The, super hard, the sour cream. So I'm gonna mix this in quickly so that it doesn't scramble my egg or cook my turkey. It wasn't very much, so. Probably just gonna get in there with my hands. Wash my hands. I'm gonna get these meatballs cooking. It's back on the heat. And I'm just gonna use, got two different size scoops. I'm trying to decide if I want the teeny one. It says 20 meatballs, so I'm gonna go with the tiny one. Even them off. Oh wait, I need oil in here. That mixture of breadcrumbs and milk is called a panade. And that should help to keep these meatballs really moist. You know how much everybody loves that word on the internet. We'll leave those alone for probably another minute or so, and then we'll put them over and then let them cook for another two minutes, and then I'm gonna put it in the front row. I'll let those go until they're ready. And in the meantime, I'll measure the rest of my ingredients for my sauce over here. Water in there. Four tablespoons of flour. Oh, I am doubling the sauce recipe because I know my husband is gonna want plenty of sauce to put over his noodles. I'm not gonna let those go for very long. And then I'm gonna do 60 grams of tomato paste because it's easier than measuring it. Well, that's two tablespoons. I knew that sounded like a lot. So four teaspoons is a tablespoon and a teaspoon. So. 40 grams. Nope, that's wrong. Let's be 25. Fail. Bad boys in there. 
like a scoop and flip. This move, nope, and flip. There we go. Four teaspoons of beef bouillon. We call it washer sister sauce around here, but I don't have washer sister sauce right now because it's at Nikki's house. So I'm just gonna. I found a thing online that said that ketchup, white wine vinegar, soy sauce, and hot sauce were a good substitute. I only need a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna kind of splash some in there. You need more of the ketchup and white wine vinegar than the soy sauce. Okay. So the thyme is supposed to be a sprig of fresh thyme, so they had you just throwing it in at the end, but I'm just gonna have a pinch this off. So I got all the ingredients in there. Recipe called to use a blender, but I needed the food processor to do the breadcrumbs, so two birds, one All right, so we got our meatballs in there. And we're gonna put eight ounces of sliced cremini or baby bella mushrooms or white mushrooms or no mushrooms if you don't like mushrooms it's your kitchen do what you want so i bought these pre-sliced from the store because ease of use which is why they're kind of bruised looking but they're fine pour the sauce on top probably gonna end up being way too much sauce but i'm not mad about it okay and then we're just gonna put Gonna put the lid on here, and we're gonna cook it on low for six to eight hours. We'll see y'all at dinner. I'm gonna try this stroke now. Meatballs have a nice texture and they are moist. <laughs> that sauce is really, really good. I'm gonna try this one out. I think this would also be really good over rice. Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, getting ready to start on this crock pot honey chicken, honey garlic chicken. That's what it is. So, we're gonna use the recipe calls for boneless or bone in skin on chicken thighs. I have these chicken leg quarters that in my freezer that I've been trying to use up forever. So, we're gonna use those, but I'm gonna actually take the skin off because it's going in the crock pot. It's just gonna get flabby. It just adds a ton of calories for no reason, in my opinion. So, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do some potatoes, green beans, also an onion, some garlic, honey, ketchup, soy sauce, oregano, and salt and pepper. Let's get started. All right, let's throw the sauce together. Again, to make my life easier, I'm going to lay ingredients. Between 112 grams of honey. On the nose. All right, now I need a half a cup of soy sauce. This one I'll measure. You can make it easier to measure honey by greasing a measuring cup or whatever, but I just weighing it is so much simpler. I just don't like to clean. I hate cleaning. I hate it. We hate it. Quarter cup of ketchup. That's eight grams. Two grams too much ain't gonna kill nobody. And a teaspoon of dried oregano. And then a tablespoon of minced garlic. Around here, we measure garlic with our hearts. It's about Three-ish cloves, ish. These are very large cloves, but like I said, we like that look right here. So. And I'm still so amazed by you. Well, I'm mincing garlic. 
have to pound the crap out of it first just because, well, first of all, it makes it stay still better, but secondly, it does half your job for you. It's probably closer to two tablespoons, but you know what? We don't care. that up. Okay. For now. Mess with the chicken next. So as I said, recipe calls for bone in skin on chicken thighs. I'm going to use these because I have them and I want to get them out of my freezer and I am going to cut them apart. You'll notice this line of fat right here. That's basically where you're going to cut apart your thigh and leg and you can kind of pop that out and see where the bone is every single and then I'm just going to take the skin off so hold me tight baby red potatoes. They're already pre-washed and everything. I'm just gonna cut the big ones like in the corners. Smaller ones in half. I mean I know it won't need a ton of salt because there's all that soy in there but potatoes can take a lot of salt. That doesn't look bad at all. And then we're just gonna put it on, leave it on steam, and we're gonna put it on low for six to eight hours, so we'll start with six. And then about 20 minutes before serving, we're gonna put the green beans in there to let them cook. And then if you want, you can add a cornstarch slurry to the sauce to thicken it up. All right, it's got about 20 minutes left on the clock, so I'm gonna open this up so we can put our green beans in here. Gonna dump them on top. Probably too many green beans, but that's okay. Just because it's against my religion not to season things. I'm just gonna put some of this buttery steakhouse on top. And we'll let that go for another 20 minutes. And then it's done. This chicken. Hmm. It's not exactly what I expected. But it's good. Um the ketchup's a little more predominant than I would like, I think. But it's it's something different. It's interesting. Try this one out. Pretty good. Mm. Alright guys, that's it for this week. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and let me know in the comments which recipe you're planning to try. I post cooking and weight loss results videos every week, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you'll know as soon as my results video goes up later on this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.